Welcome to the Reformation Fellowship Podcast. Reformation Fellowship provides support and fellowship for all who would stand for the Reformation of Christ Church worldwide. We long to see the church revitalized by the gospel and seek to encourage all who share that vision. We gather together for gospel-hearted fellowship around gospel-minded theology. Hello and welcome back to the Reformation Fellowship. My name is Justin Schell. I am your host and I'm so glad that you've joined us today. We are beginning a new series of conversations and we will be talking with Dr. Clive Bauscher, Provost of Union School of Theology, and we are going to be talking about the Gospel of John. Uh, Today's episode we're calling what Jesus has to say about life. And we're going to look across the gospel of John and just explore what Jesus says about life, eternal life, fellowship and relationship with Christ, um, both what it says and also how we can begin even now to enjoy this eternal life that is ours in Christ. So it's it's um, going to be a great conversation. We hope It encourages you, and we hope you'll come back and join us for the next two episodes as well. But without further ado, let's jump into the conversation. Clive, thank you so much for joining us here on the Reformation Fellowship Podcast. We're so glad you could be here. Oh, Justin, it's great to see you uh, today. A real privilege to be here. Thanks for the invitation. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited. These uh, three conversations um on the gospel of john and particularly what jesus has to say about life in the gospel of john um would you maybe could you introduce us to where the conversation is going to go uh in these next three weeks yeah sure so we're we're going to be thinking justin about what what god saves us into uh what he saves us for not just what he saved us from. Uh, So we're going to be thinking about great topics about life, uh, eternal life, what what the Gospel of John means by that. And so as we're going to see, we're going to be thinking about about fellowship with Christ, about uh, what sort of relationship it is with Jesus Mm. that we've been uh, saved for. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. And this is something you've been digging into quite a bit, spending quite a bit of time in, right? You have a a book coming out in the next, um, maybe you can tell us when, but in the the New Studies in Biblical Theology series uh, called Life in the Sun, Johannine Union, Oneness and Participation with Christ. Um, Could you maybe tell us a little bit about the book? Um, when it's coming out and how yeah, sure. how that kind of has led to these conversations. Yes, yeah, so the book is scheduled to come out about a year from now, just in March 2023. I think it's penciled in for at the minute. And uh, yeah, this, this project called Life in the Sun has been running for a few years now. And it, it's just been such a blessing to work on, actually. Mm. Just just looking at these truths of union with Christ in, in John's gospel and in, in 1 John or 1 John, I think you call it, over in North America. <laughs> um, it's been an amazing blessing and, and quite sort of transformational along the way for me personally, I think. Mm. Well, praise God. That's great. That's great. Um, project's been really looking at this idea that True life is, is found in participating and sharing with God. And uh, when you think about it, relationship is, is sort of sharing in the life of, a, of another, isn't it? Yeah. And so, so what the, the project is really driving at is that um, the Christian life turns out to be all about participation in in God's life. It's all about relational participation with Jesus. Mm. And uh, I wonder, do we, do we tend to think of it that way? Mm. What do you think, Justin? Does does that sound familiar or? Well, uh, it's, it's starting to, um, (laughs) but I was uh, raised in a youth group in the Southern part of the U S which means that um, 
the Christian life was defined by what you couldn't do and, uh, and had very little to do with uh, what we would call union with Christ or enjoying God. We, we had to spend time with him because that was another one of the lists of things you had to do if you want to wanted to be on God's good side. So don't do these things. Don't drink or party or uh, <laughs> this, this yeah. list of uh, don't do's. And then instead of that, you need to go to church. You need to um, help grannies across the street. And um, you should read your Bible um, because there may be good advice for how to, how to live there mm-hmm. in scripture. Is that um, much different from, uh, maybe what a, a youth would experience growing up in the UK in the church? I guess it it, it kind of varies, doesn't it, from church yeah. to church? Yeah. Um, but but I think I think for me, realizing that that the heart of the Christian faith is about that that mm. close relationship with Christ. Yeah. Uh, that that was really transforming, yeah. and then you know you you start understanding properly why you would want to do certain things and why you would want to avoid other things. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, because it, it, it's then coming out of um, that, that closeness with him, that relationship mm-hmm. with him. Yeah. And you start yeah. to desire the things that he desires and uh, love the things that he loves, you know? Yeah. Well, that's the, that's the promise, right? That as we, we look at him, as we are attached to him, uh, d- you know, depending on what metaphor scripture is using that we will become like him we will be fed through him we will bear fruit like yeah he bears so uh, i'm really excited about the conversation yeah me too i mean he 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 shares his heart with us doesn't he Mm -hmm. and 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 as he does that he 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 changes our hearts Mm -hmm. so yeah and that that's exciting yeah well let's um let's jump in then to to John's gospel and and see what we discover. Yeah, let's do that. So let me let me take you to to John 20 verses 30 and 31 if I could. And there's the sort of a purpose statement uh by the the writer of the gospel here. And he says now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples which are not written in this book in, in the gospel. But but these are written so that, and, and here's the purpose, so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, and this is a bit I want to stress really, that by believing, by, by trusting in him personally, you may have life. Uh, you may have life in his name. Mm. And so that, that's why John is writing, and, and it's why... We see in the gospel, Jesus is, is, is sent by the Father. It's amazing that, isn't it? That, that's what God wants for us. He, he wants us mm-hmm. to have life. He wants us mm-hmm. to experience life to the full. Yeah. And uh, so that's why the Son came into the world, uh, which is a, a beautiful idea. Mm. Um, you know, it's not that he wants to, I don't know, some, somehow curtail our fun. It's actually that he wants us to, to flourish, mm. find you know, true life, yeah. uh, tr- true enjoyment, true delight. Yeah. Yeah. It, it reminds me of what Jesus prays in John 17, which I, I think we'll probably talk about a little bit later, but just that this is eternal life, that they know you, uh, yeah. the one true and living God and, and Jesus whom you sent. Why do you think we have these other ideas of what, the Christian life is supposed to be about when we're offered life in Christ. Where does that come from? Do you think? I mean, I think it, it, it sometimes comes from misunderstanding what God is like, uh, f- failing to, to sort of see that he's the God who is love, um, the God who, who is Trinity and, and who wants to, to share his life with us who who sort of invites us in you know to his life so i i I guess these things happen just in when um we we lose the heart of the gospel Uh, now when we lose christ's heart towards us 
towards yeah. towards sinners. Well, to come back then to John 20, 30, 31, and the reason John's writing um, yeah. is to is to uh, is that we might believe, and that by believing we may have life in His name. Yeah. Um, help us to start to 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 go deeper into that. Yeah. So I think I think John's writing so that we might be drawn into that relationship with Christ, which, which is life. We're going to unpack that statement a little bit as we go through these three episodes. And, and so the, the whole gospel really has this, this theme of life permeating it. You might even say that a main theme of the gospel is life from and in the sun or uh, eschatological life uh, from and in Christ. So what we see, I think, is Jesus offering people um, to, to begin the life of the age to come in the here and now, which, again, is, mm-hmm. is hugely exciting, isn't, yeah. isn't dull at all. You see um, the theme of life running all the way through. So, so if you look at the first 12 chapters of John's Gospel, you see uh, Jesus is, is revealing the Father and, and himself uh, to the world. He, he's making this offer of life to people. Uh, Some of them receive it, but there's a lot of rejection um, of of that offer of life going on as well. And uh, then there's a bit of a transition in chapter 12 towards the end of that chapter, uh, verses 44 to 50 at the end of chapter 12. And then there's a shift of gear, isn't there? And in in chapters 13 to 17, uh, Jesus is now sort of revealing himself and the father in a very intimate and close way to his disciples and and it's all about life in him Mm. so you know if you think of something like john 15 where we have the vine and the branches it's about how uh jesus is in us his people and we're in him Mm -hmm. so yeah the the theme of life goes really all the way through and is uh Certainly one of the most important themes, I think. Mm. You mentioned um, that Jesus is revealing the Father and himself. And, and I think, of you know, John 1, we were kicked off with, this is the word who is God, who mm. was with the Father. Um, verse 18, no one has seen the Father. We know no one's seen God, but the only God at the father's side, he has, he has made him known. Yeah. How does that idea, and even Jesus again and again saying, I, I didn't come to do my own works. I didn't come to say my own words. I'm, I'm, yeah. this, I'm not exercising my own authority. Um, in fact, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. If I, I, I'm here to reveal the father. How does that revelation, particularly as you mentioned in the first 12 chapters, how does that connect with um, what what uh, Jesus also is saying about life, kind of through those through those chapters? Well, I I guess what he's revealing is that he's the source of life, mm-hmm. um, that that life is found in him. Does that partly answer your question? So, if you if you think of the the signs in in the gospel. Most of those signs, um, I, I think, are showing, well, they're showing Jesus' glory, but they're, that they're showing in particular uh, that he's the, the source of life, I think. Mm. So if you, if you just think through those, the, the healing of the nobleman's son, um, the healing of the, the lame man at the pool, um, this mm. is the, the restoration of life, isn't it? The, mm. um, the giving of strength. Uh, if you yeah. think about the, the feeding of the 5,000, and the bread of life discourse, uh, you know, Jesus, again, the, the source of life, the source of, of, of all spiritual life, uh, healing of the man born blind, uh, the giving of light, which is really closely linked with life um, for John, I think, uh, perhaps most explicitly the raising of Lazarus from the dead, um, all revealing who Jesus is. And uh, revealing that, that, you know, he is the life, that life is, is found in him. 
mm. uh, that he has life in himself, even. Yeah. Uh, and, and actually, John 2 as well, turning of, of water into wine at the uh, wedding at, at Cana, um, about the blessings and joy of the Messianic age, uh, the life of the age to come. I think that's probably a, a, a better translation uh, for eternal life. You know, that is the, the life of the age to come. Mm. Um, so, yeah, all, all of those signs revealing that uh, Jesus is the son who has life in himself and, and we can participate in that life. We can we can share in it. Mm. Yeah. And if if life is. If eternal life is knowing God, then it would make sense that revelation, <laughs> Jesus revealing himself, revealing the father would yeah. be ne necessary. It would be critical because yeah. this is eternal life that they know God. And, and so, yeah, yeah that's wonderful. Can you, um, this may be a, a little bit of a rabbit trail for us, but um, we were, we, we were looking at that, for that mission statement in John 20, 30 through 31. Mm -hmm. And um, I was, reading just recently that the the story of Lazarus being raised from the dead and just notice Martha's confession there in John 11 I believe that you are the Christ the son of God mm -hmm. um, the one who is to come and that that having that phrase there that that John uses in his mission statement could we say that John is wanting as we read his his gospel he's wanting us to have the same experience martha had encountering jesus as we encounter the word so she she encountered jesus <laughs> and said you i believe you're the christ the son of god and john is saying that as we encounter jesus in the word by the spirit we should have that same confession it should it should come out of us. Is he, in a sense, um, saying that the that the word, the encounter of the word, is to encounter Jesus in the same way? I, I think he's certainly saying in that purpose statement in John twenty that that through reading this word, he he wants you to encounter the one who 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 is the Christ, mm -hmm. uh, who who is the promised Davidic King, who is the eternal son of god yeah mm. and, and that through that encounter uh you, you you see who god is um you see who jesus is uh you're you're, you're drawn into this uh, close fellowship with him this this relationship with him and, and so you're in life so you find mm. life you know so often we wish we could just go back and maybe see him raise Lazarus from the dead or see him feed the 5,000. And uh, right. it seems like John is saying, you don't need, you don't need to be there. That's why I've written this down. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and in fact, there were those who did uh, see the feeding of the 5,000 who were there and who were looking for, for life in the wrong place. Right. Mm. You know, they, they think that they're, they're getting a free meal ticket. And uh, Jesus says, you know, you need, you need to come to me. Friends, we want to take just a moment out of our conversation to tell you about the upcoming Reformation Fellowship Conference in Atlanta, Georgia, November 11th through 12th. Our theme, the theme that we will gather around is the gospel, our hope, our banner. We want to come together celebrate the gospel, unite around the gospel, and be encouraged in the gospel. You will hear plenary addresses from Michael Reeves, Dane Ortland, Phil Riken, Jeff Norris. You will also select a track to participate in at the conference. There's a track for any Christian who just wants to go deeper in their faith. There's a track for pastors, a track for women, and a track for theologians and scholars. And the hope for these tracks is to grow you, to develop you wherever you're at, in whatever way you're serving the church, but also to encourage you by connecting you with others in a similar place. 
Those tracks are each led by wonderful theologian leaders, and we're, we just know that you're going to be encouraged. So that is November 11th and 12th in Atlanta, Georgia, hosted by Perimeter Church. It will be the first Reformation Fellowship Conference in the U.S., and we will gather around the gospel, our hope, our banner. Everything you need to know, you can find at reffellowship.org. That's R-E-F fellowship.org. We hope to see you there. Well, I'm going to get us back on track. <laughs> uh, thank you for letting me uh, take over the conversation for a minute for, there for John 11. But um, you were helping us see how these signs, the seven signs in John's gospel, reveal who Christ is um, and who the Father is. Uh, so that we might have life. Help us. Um, what else should we be should we be seeing? What else should we know from that? Well, I, I think what I was saying was that um, that the signs are really prominent in the gospel, and they reveal Jesus as the one who who's the source of life for us, um, one who we can can know personally for ourselves, and. I guess that, that, that John in writing the gospel is trying, trying to bring us sort of um, right up against that truth, you know, that, that we see Jesus as the one, the only one who can, who can give us eternal life. Mm. Uh, and, and actually the, that that life is, is found in, in relationship with him. So you were, you were quoting uh, John 17 uh, verse three, you know, th- this is eternal life that they know you, the only true God and and jesus uh jesus christ whom you sent so so yeah john is john is trying to uh get us to encounter jesus so that we might know him mm. and he's saying that 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 knowledge that that's where that's where life is and actually that's that's what the life of the age to come is all about mm. so you know um when people are talking about heaven what 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 is eternal life uh, what is this life of the age to come? It, it, it's um, its principal thing is is being in the presence of God Himself, n- mm. knowing Christ face to face. It's it, it's it's knowledge of Him. Mm. Talk a little bit more about that knowledge because I think, um, just like maybe in my youth group, we were often told the Christian life is not doing this and instead doing that. Um, we're also told, well, if you will ascribe, if you would mm. uh, mentally assent to right. these four or five truths, then that is knowing God. That is that makes you a Christian. Right. And, uh, wins you eternal life. Sort uh, of look at, looking down the doctrinal list and and, and yeah, off all is, those is that what? Is that what John means here? The uh, or Jesus praying that to know God is that? Um, Ab- I'm assuming absolutely. it's not. <laughs> Ab- absolutely not. And uh, in that purpose statement in in John 20, that the kind of belief that that John is trying to uh, show us is is a personal trust. It's a it's a relational thing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's uh, it's seeing seeing Jesus' goodness, seeing his character, seeing his heart and, and, and trusting him and, and finding life there. And uh, it, it, in fact, the, the kind of language that Jesus uses for this relationship, for this relationship that uh, sort of defines what it is to be a Christian is, is, is pretty astonishing because he says, for instance, in, in John 6 and uh, John 14, verse 20, he talks about uh, me, Jesus, being in you and you being in me. So this isn't some kind of dry sort of um, intellectual ascent, you know, or, 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 or ticking down a doctrinal list even. Uh, this, is, this is deep, personal, close relationship with the one who made you. Just, just mm. amazing. Mm. Yeah. And, and, and sort of so close that 
you know, those words, me and you and you and me, they talk about the relationship being being interior to each one. You know, he, he he's that close to me. He says mm-hmm. it, it, it's um, Christ in me and me in him, a close sort of involvement in in one another's life. Yeah, mm-hmm. just just amazing. And like like you, Justin, I wish I wish I'd uh, that had clicked with me earlier mm-hmm. um, in my own life. Yeah. yeah. We may talk about this in the next episode, so feel free to to um, push it off till then. But I wonder if um, you could talk to us a little bit about um, how it seems that Jesus is trying to say that the relationship he has with the Father, that he's really come to share that with us. And so he says things like, I and you and you and me, even as... I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or, you know, in different ways throughout the gospel. Uh, it seems that our in himness <laughs> is, is modeled some, some way uh, after his in the fatherness, if, uh, if I can use that phrase. Is yeah, it, that's is, right. Yeah, tell us, help us understand is how that is, or... or are we in Jesus the same way he's in the father or what's that mean that we are, that we're in Jesus and he's in us and he's in the father and the father's in him. Yeah. Okay. So um, just as an example here, uh, John 14 verse 20, Jesus says, says of believers, uh, you'll know that I am in my father and you're in me and I'm in you. So, so you're absolutely right. He's, he's used, the same sort of language to describe our relationship with him uh, as as the language that he uses to describe his own relationship with the father and um i mean when i was working on this i i I didn't want to um take that trinitarian relationship and then immediately read it back into uh what jesus is saying about our relationship with him so, so what I tried to do was to um, look at our relationship with him as it's described in these various passages, first of all, and then compare it to what he's saying about his relationship with the father. And what you see is that it is strikingly similar. Mm. And, and then the fact that he's using the same kind of language of, of oneness, of in one anotherness, you might say just adds a whole layer of, of richness to it because he's saying, well, you know, um, you see this, this intimacy that I share with the father, you know, you see this uh, unbreakability of our bond, this amazing closeness and, and lots of other things as well that we could go into. Um, and yes, actually those things are, are there in my relationship with you as a believer mm. as well. And uh yeah, that's just mind blowing, really. I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But what that what that language is really talking about—that me and you, you and me language—it it is a kind of oneness. So Jesus doesn't um, push it uh, when he's talking about his relationship with believers all the way to say I and believers are one. Um, although the vine and the branches has that kind of um, metaphor going on, doesn't it? But when he's talking about his relationship with the father, it's this, this me and you, you and me relationship with the father that he has, that he says describes his oneness with the father. So he really is saying, um, you know, the, the kind of intimacy that, that you, Justin, have with me, Jesus, is uh is that close you know it's uh it, it, it's almost like a oneness it's, it's that mm-hmm. intimate so i think you also yeah. kind of hinted so is is it exactly the same as jesus relationship with the father well no um but it, it's close enough that jesus uses the same sort of language to describe it mm-hmm. so there's a lot of similarity yeah. and i think as you say um speaks of of jesus inviting us into the mm. the life of the trinity as you say mind-blowing um 
my next question that, that just comes to mind in this moment is, well, how do I experience more of this? <laughs> or how, um, um, maybe I'm, I'm listening and this is the first time I've heard anything about union with Christ. Maybe I'm, yeah. I'm listening and I've, I've, I've known a little bit about these things. At least I under, kind of understand the, all these m- metaphors of vine and branches, head and body. Um, yeah. How do I begin to experience this, um, this communion, this, this uh, in Christness um, a little more? Uh, I'm yeah. obviously not saying we're getting everything here in this world. There are some things in the in the world to come, but how do I experience as much as Jesus wants me to have of himself mm-hmm. in this life? I mean, several things to say there, I think, but the first is that through the gospel, um, it's this me and you, you and me relationship that Jesus says is eternal life, is, is the life of the age to come. And the thing to realize is that he's saying, therefore, that, that through faith in him, we've begun that now. So, mm. you know, that the, the life of the age to come has, has already broken in and, and we can uh, we can share in that now. So, you know, in, in that sense, we're, I think you're right to be expectant. And, and that's the right question. How can we experience more of this? Um, Second thing to say is uh, it's good to dwell on these truths and, and, you know, to drink them in from from God's word here to realize this is this is really what Jesus is saying Mm. about the heart of the Christian life and to to let that sink in, you know, in your prayer times and your devotional times that that can be pretty transforming. I also think to, to, to just remember what the source of this is. The source of this this relationship you know it it's the father's love for you um it, it it's nothing that that we need to do uh mm. you know the source of this in john 6 we'll probably have a bit of a look at this uh in the second episode is uh jesus death on the cross for you and mm. uh his, his his resurrection uh so, so from our side uh, you know, Jesus says there in John six, it's the one who who, who feeds on me, uh, who feeds on my flesh and drinks my my blood. It's the one who's trusting me personally and, and trusting my my death for him or her who who has this life, who has this me and you, you and me relationship. Um, so, you know, if that's you, if you're listening to this and, and you're trusting Christ personally in, in that way, then. This is already yours, uh, Jesus, Jesus says to you in, in John's gospel. And, and so it, it's kind of a journey of exploration, I guess, to, to sort of um, experience that more deeply. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it, it, you know, it's certainly not something you've got to work your way up to, um, but, but, but realize is yours and, and kind of enter into and bask in the Father's love that is the source of it all, if I mm-hmm. can put it that way yeah i'm I'm glad you mentioned the father's love one of the things that i've recently noticed in in john's gospel is how much it seems um jesus has come to not um he's not keeping the mad father away the angry god So nice Jesus, angry God, he's actually creating a pathway where the love of the father can come to us. Um, yeah. And so it's, I think it's interesting at one point, Jesus says um, that, that the love that the father has for him will be in us. So yeah. the father is sharing his love for Jesus with yeah. me. Yeah. But then elsewhere, it, Jesus says that the love, um, that the Father has for us this time, not not for Jesus, but for us, is the same in some way yeah. as His love for Jesus. <laughs> and so, yeah, um, yeah, it, it's been interesting to just read and look at what Jesus has to say about the Father's love in the Book of John. 
and how it's flowing to us through Jesus and it's flowing to to us about Jesus and it's flowing uh, from our hearts to the Father because of Jesus. There's this yeah. um, in mutual love exchange that seems to be happening yeah. as Jesus brings yeah. us to the Father. It's, uh, yeah, I, I like that you say mutual exchange of love mm. uh, be- between God and us. So it, it's really two way, isn't it? Mm. And and when you think about it, that that in one another language, me and you and you in me is is really symmetric. You know, just mm. the way the language is put together, it is mm. symmetric. Mm. Um, and and I think that's supposed to bring out that that God wants this to be two way. He wants it to be mutual. You know, he, he, he does love us this way and, and he wants us to delight in that and, and love him in return. You know, this is the kind of fellowship that, that he's passionate about and that he, mm. that he wants. Uh, you yeah. know, that's why, why Jesus came, he says. Isn't mm. that amazing? Yeah. Okay, so we have looked at how a believer might press into these truths and and, uh, enjoy them more, have them shaping their lives. Let's expand that a little bit and just think about this topic of worship. How does this, um, how does the truth of this in one anotherness, um, the, the truth of eternal life being that we know and enjoy God, mm. how does that affect worship? I get. I guess when when I'm particularly sort of focused on on worshiping the Lord, say on a Sunday or I don't know, um, in a devotional time on my own, I quite often think about um, this this me and you, you and me relationship. You know, mm. and it's it's a relationship that's. That sort of dynamic and, and lively, like like any personal relationship. Um, it, it's a relationship I'm secure in that that is you know lasting. It's it's the life of the age to come. It's it, it's never going to end. Mm. And um, there's a there's a sweetness to that. I think, as you say, it's mutual. It's it, it's two way. Um, I, I I I'm in Christ's presence. Um, he, he's there with me. And so, you know, I think I think the more this click with me, um, the more amazing a thing um, the Christian life became, you know, the, the, the more um, amazing actually sung worship became mm. a, as an experience, because uh, w- what an amazing thing to to be in this kind of. Uh, relationship with, mm-hmm. uh, with with Christ Himself. Yeah. So I, I I guess I I think of worship as being my expression, my my response to my my part of um, that that this this fellowship that Christ has has drawn me into. And it's you know it's a it's a little bit like um, an engagement and a marriage, I guess. So the, the sort of sweetness and intimacy and um, closeness of, of that engagement has begun and, um, you know, the full joys of the consummation of it um, await us. We're, uh, we're drawn into that life of worship now. Yeah, mm, that's wonderful. And it's something God delights in as well. It, it, it is something that that He is passionate for, and and it's what He's 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 saved us for. It's what He's saved us into. Yeah. Um, it's the desire of His heart. I think that's just shocking that um, He would delight at all in the fact that I love Him. That 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 would move His heart. The that that's something that He appreciates that he, he enjoys mm-hmm. me enjoying mm-hmm. him it's, it's shocking and it I, I think it but it is reflecting on it and believing it receiving that good news that yeah. starts to warm my heart more towards yeah. him and and maybe in some sense it 
will always for all eternity shock us. Like, I can't believe I'm here in the presence of the living <laughs> yeah. God. It's yeah. been what two yeah. million millennia, but I still can't believe I'm here. Yeah. So, wonderful oh. and amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That is wonderful. And that's, um, that brings us here to the end of this first conversation, but there are two more conversations where we're just going to go a little bit deeper into this um, yeah. beautiful, wonderful uh, story of eternal life that John is telling in his gospel and that uh, God has, has invited us into. So, Clive, thank you so much for joining us on this episode and look forward to our next two conversations as well. Yeah, thanks so much, Justin. Can't wait for next time. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Reformation Fellowship Podcast. We pray that this time together has been a blessing to you. The Reformation Fellowship is a ministry of union. And so all that we do, we hope it helps you to delight in God, grow in Christ, serve the church, and bless the world. If that is your hope, that is your desire, then friends, welcome to the fellowship.